Okay, in recording this video I have encountered several technical issues. I hope you don't mind me. Alright, so um, uh, yeah, I was, I was saying that uh, on this screen I can take you through these results. The first thing that we can observe in these descriptive statistics is the fact that uh, there is a mean of uh, the uh, comprehension for, for males, as you can see in this uh, in this w w window here, and the mean is 3.61, whereas the uh, mean for females is uh, 3.75, as I indicated before. Now, if you take away uh, 3.61 from 3.75, this is what you will exactly get in uh, the mean difference uh, window here, uh, which is a part of the independent samples t-test. Uh, this mean difference simply indicates that uh, males have a smaller mean score compared with females. And to figure out whether this uh, observed difference between the two mean scores is statistically significant, we have conducted a t-test. And the t-statistic in this, in this t-test is minus 2.03 with a p-value of 0 0.042, which is smaller than 0 0.05, which indicates that there is, in fact, a significant difference between the two groups. This is the normal t-test that we usually uh, conduct in um, you know, situations where we have got a binary de uh, independent variable. Now, for a linear regression analysis, uh, we, we do exactly the same thing. But the difference is that we set one of those categories as uh, the dependent variable, uh, uh, as the uh, reference group, and the other category will be compared against that reference group. In other words, um, in this analysis, in the regression analysis, I have set um, males as the uh, reference group, and as you can see from this regression table, the mean score uh, or the mean estimate is 3.6.606, uh, uh, which is more or less the same as the mean, as we saw in the other table right above. It's, it's right here in the right corner. I have just copied and pasted it here for uh, easier reference. So this is th th serving as the intercept of this regression models in, uh, the model. In other words, if we assume that a regression uh, model is like this on the uh, 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 um, horizontal axis, we have gender, and on the vertical axis, we have comprehension. Um, the, the intercept of this regression analysis will be set at right here, which is basically the mean score of males, which is uh, let's say it's around here and it's it, it's equal to 3.61 so this is the intercept of this analysis now we're going to compare the mean score of females in this analysis against this one so the the female uh, mean score which would be represented right on this uh, part of the graph will be slightly above that of males and it is indicated as 3.75, or slightly more than that, because it has only two decimal values. And the regression line will cut through these two points, so and it will uh, connect them with each other. Now, uh, females are being compared against the intercept, which is males. And this is exactly what we get in the uh, linear regression table, where with the intercept, is set to be males, which is 3.606, and females are compared against that. Now, if you take away, like I said, uh, 3.61 from 3.75, you will get this score. Of course, with more decimals, you'll get exactly the same uh, estimate, uh, which means that a female's mean value or mean index is 0 0.147 uh, units above uh, that of the males in this analysis. Now the question is whether the observed differences between males and female mean scores is statistically significant or not. As we saw in the previous uh, analysis, which was a t-test, yes, the p-value was um, um, statistically significant. And the p-value here under the regression analysis also indicates that we have 
uh, the same statistical significance difference. And interestingly, the p-values are exactly the same, 0 0.042 for the regression analysis and 0 0.042 uh, for the, uh, the, um, the t-test. Uh, so in sum, a linear regression analysis is really, uh, a t-test is really a, a linear regression analysis in which the uh, independent variable has got two categories. Now I'm going to move on to a slightly more complex uh, analysis. I'm going to explain the concept of dummy variables in explaining this uh, more complex uh, analysis. And in this analysis, I'm going to um, compare uh, the different levels of stream in their comprehension scores. In order to do that, the first thing that I want to conduct is, uh, just like the previous analysis, a descriptive analysis. So I'm going to click on descriptives under exploration, uh, move stream to uh, split by, and uh, comprehension to variables to figure out whether these uh, have uh, any uh, observable differences in their mean values. And I'm going to uh, again change this um, uh, view into variable uh, variables across rows. And let's m remove missing and n and also median really just for simplicity. Now let's look at the mean scores. The mean of the normal technical uh, group is 1.90, uh, is exactly 1.90, with two decimal values of course. Uh, whereas the mean score of the normal academic group is 3.22, and that of the express group is the highest, which is 4.14. Uh, now if I wanted to run um, any kind of regression analysis, I would um, fix the first level, which is normal technical, as the reference group, and I would compare the other two groups against it. If you're now asking me, um, is it necessary to set the smallest group here as the reference group, I would say no, it's not really necessary. You, can, you could uh, set uh, normal academic or express, or in other variables if you have other categories, anything that you feel like uh, you want to uh, identify as your um, uh, reference group. In this analysis for s simplicity and ease of interpretation, I have decided to set normal technical as uh, the reference group, and as you will see later, it will also become the in intercept of uh, the simple regression analysis that I'm conducting. Okay, let's now uh, move on to the second analysis. In these scenarios, under the general linear model or a GLM, um, where we want to uh, compare three groups and, and more, we usually use an ANOVA, right? So let's do an ANOVA first and then compare the results of the ANOVA with the results of a regression model. Let's click on ANOVA and go to uh, the ANOVA uh, menu here. Under the ANOVA menu, I just want to move uh, stream to uh, fixed factors and also com uh, comprehension to my uh, dependent variable. Now I have um, an, an ANOVA here. The other thing I wanted to do is to do a postdoc analysis. Um, I just keep a postdoc as tucky and if you want to figure out the differences between these these different types please watch my previous videos. Uh, for this analysis this is more or less um, enough because I just want to show you um, how these are different and also by the way I'm going to also click on partial eta squared which indicates the effect size of uh, stream on uh, the variance that is observed in comprehension, the comprehension variable. Now let's go through the results. First of all there is a statistically significant difference among those three groups as is indicated by uh, the p-value here. And the partial eta squared is relatively large, actually. It's uh, 0 0.213, which indicates that m around 21% of the variance observed in your comprehension variable is explained by uh, the um, fixed factor stream. There is also an f value and also uh, a sum of squares and all that. And if you go down to the postdoc analysis, you'll figure uh, you'll find out uh, the differences uh, in every pair comparison. For example, uh, the discrepancy between the mean of the normal technical and normal academic 
uh, groups is statistically significant as indicated by the p-value on the right-hand side in this column. Uh, and in the same way, normal technical and express have a significant difference in their mean scores. And finally, the normal academic and, norm, uh, and express also have a significant difference. This is how we conduct, uh, generally speaking, um, an ANOVA test uh, in this scenario. Now, I want to do the same thing, replicate the same thing uh, using regression. And you'll find out that actually regression with using categorical uh, variables as uh, your independent variable is actually like an ANOVA. So let's go to regression, click on linear regression, and uh, move the different variables to uh, to your uh, analysis. So the first thing I want to move is stream. I'm going to move it to factors. Factors are categorical, whereas covariates are continuous. In a follow-up video, I will um, also show um, how you can combine factors and covariates with each other. Uh, so stream goes to factors and uh, comprehension goes to dependent variable. And the analysis has been conducted. And there's one more thing that I just uh, wanted to make sure that I have gotten it right. One is, uh, yes, the reference group, I want to keep it as normal technical. As you recall, the normal technical group had the lowest mean score. So I want to keep it as the reference group, not only as a reference, but also as uh, the intercept. Okay, the next thing that uh, we uh, want to check is est um, no, estimated marginal means. Let me see. Mar okay, uh, here. I want to get the omnibus ANOVA test as well in this regression analysis, and I'll let you know why we need this omnibus regression uh, t uh, ANOVA test. Okay, so we got it. This is the omnibus uh, test. Now, uh, I'm going to continue with this, and I'm going to compare this with the results of the ANOVA.